yours is not working now? Which is which? Hold on. This one, okay. Good evening. This is the Village of New Paltz Planning Board. This is a meeting of um, Tuesday. It still says Thursday. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Tuesday. You know, I look here for the first time when I'm doing this. It's Tuesday, June 6th, um, and 2017. And so. We have uh, public comment this evening. We have a few people who wish to speak. We'll get to that. Uh, then we have uh, three applications tonight. Um, we have <coughs> PB 1708. That is um, an expansion of a home on 16 North Mannheim. Uh, PB 1712 is a, a site plan compliance and uh, a driveway you know, on 15 Mohonk and PB 1713 <coughs> is a revisit of application from 2014 for modifications to a building yet to open uh, new construction on Main Street 51 Main Street uh, we also did a site visit this past Sunday uh, for PB 1706, which is a proposed black box theater, and uh, so we'll have a discussion about that. I guess it'll be you and I and talking about that. Um, approval of minutes, and then the meeting for June 20th. So that's about it. Um, so public comment. Uh, we ask people if you can, if you would come and speak at the microphone. That enables us to record you and also have the people who are watching at home. Um, also, we ask that you could, if you don't mind, state your name and try to keep your comments to about three minutes. Um, so first up is Susan Teichestop, if you'd like to. Thank you. I've been planning to speak. I wanted to ask a question. Well, you can ask a question. Uh, the fellow across, directly across from me is going to expand the building he's buying the board. And I just got my tax bill. My property as, is listed as a residence. Uh, what will his property be listed as with the several renters and uh, college students, I guess, uh, and no supervision? I mean, who's going to be in charge? The garbage, you know, other things that go on. So I, I will uh, not answer it right this minute, but when we get to the application, I'd be happy to answer as much of that as I'm able to. Okay. So let me just make a note. Um, so next up is Kathleen Rivera. I'm commenting about the property that Sue was uh, commenting about on Mm -hmm. uh, I live on North Mannheim, and there are several houses that have students from two to four, and uh, that is sufficient, I believe, to keep the residents' house, the houses looking like houses, not to be looking like motels or dormitories. So after you have a six and seven and eight in a house, and you enlarge it, it looks like a motel, it uh, uh, brings on more traffic and more disturbance in the neighborhood, uh, so I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about, and, and we, we know it's, it's going to be college students, and everybody works at different, I mean, goes to school at different times. So there's always interruptions, always all, to, all into the late evening. And when you have seven or eight, 
you can have 14, because it's a part. We know that. You bring in friends, you bring in somebody else to sleep over, it's a lot more, and more people are parking on the street. So I'm worried about safety and appearance and disturbance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not going to probably butcher your name because I'm having a hard time. Nick? Uh, Florio. Florio. Thank you. Still having a little trouble reading it. Apologize. Good evening. My name is Nick Florio. I live on Harrington Street. My yard plus. Uh, Mr. Boltros's yard. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he's putting a parking lot in the back a six or eight car parking lot. Now, if he's going to pave that parking lot, where is the water and the snow going to run off to? It's going to come down into my yard. There has to be some kind of drainage. And also, from where I sit on my deck in my backyard is where I spend a lot of time. I have a six foot fence in the back, but you can see well over that fence I don't feel like looking at a parking lot while I'm sitting in my yard, and it's going to depreciate the value of my home. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, Dave Boss. Hi, good evening. My name is Dave Boss, and I'm Shell working on Boulder. Boss? Uh, I'm with him. Okay, so, <laughs> so um, you're, you're in general agreement? That's good. Um, okay, so that's everybody. In, is there anybody else who's here who didn't sign up who wishes to speak about any? Um, it doesn't have to be about this application or whatever, but if you wish to, now's the time. All right, hearing none, then we'll move on. Thanks. Um, and our first application is PB 1708. So, Mr. Botros, if you all would like to join us at the table, um, I'd like to grab this microphone. So um, this evening what we'll be doing largely is just going over your application to make sure that um, if the board has any specific questions um, and make sure that the site plan that, we're, that you've submitted now is in fact the one that we want to go forward with. Um, and then we'll do some administrative things to move move it forward, and um, that's pretty much all we'll do tonight. We will um, not really be going into an in-depth discussion about the application other than some specific questions people might have, but certainly are free to bring up. So um, 
Let me just pull up the site plan that we have. You want to share it? Yeah, I'm sure that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And different, the two additional wet stamp copies that were. Oh, okay. That's fine. Do you you want to share with me then? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're going to have that. Or do you want to do it? Um, okay, so if you want to just quickly summarize for us what part of what's on the site plan, and then we'll, we'll go forward from there. Sure, what we have done is we have um, planned to convert the attic space, <coughs> the existing residence, into some additional bedrooms. Right. And in doing so, um, increase slightly the floor area of the attic space by adding some dormers mm -hmm. um, to accommodate the bedrooms and the bathroom. And in doing that, we are now required to accommodate some additional parking spaces for those bedrooms. Um, based on comments from previous meetings, we have now located the parking within all of the setback requirement lines now. Mm -hmm. um, nothing that we're proposing is in opposition to any of the zoning law. Um, we did add a carport for some shading and rain protection <coughs> for the cars um, there on the northerly boundary, but beyond the setback boundary. Mm -hmm. um, still including the plans for the evergreens along the northern boundary. We also included evergreens along the eastern boundary. Um, we re added the pool patio um, for future above ground pool, um, including a shed for some landscape maintenance purposes, but again, all beyond the setback requirement. And also included on the plan is the proposed addition of a family room and a deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so those are the changes. Um, so you're just looking at a smaller yeah. version? Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. Um, any specific questions at this point you might have? Uh, I, I mean, I'm looking at it and it's changed quite a bit uh, and it's uh, it's obvious you've done all your homework here to where to put all of the uh, where to park the car so you'll have five there and then the existing garage is the six so it gives you one spot for each bed correct And just curious, so, so is your intention to, to rent this out as a student rental? It's not. Um, it's a residential use. That's all I'm promising. Uh, the, the application doesn't request who will be living there. Uh, I've never offered that information, but I've been asked, and I, I have given different answers. And it, you should assume it can I would like to, thank you, I'll repeat myself. Okay, um, I'd like to answer the question as to whether renters will be using it, and I would like to say that uh, it will be used as a residential property. Nowhere on the application does it request uh, identification of who will be residing there, and I've been asked that, but I've never been offered the, I never, never offered the information, and when I've been asked on multiple occasions, I've given different answers. So you should assume the answer is fluid until such time as the building is occupied. Uh, you want to assume it's students, assume it's students. Um, you want to assume it's a uh, family, assume it's a, it's a family. Um, and uh, I just don't want to be accused of being disingenuous or dishonest on something I'm not required to provide. It's a residential use and that's what I'm proceeding. The Shade Tree Commission members uh, in this form, in a foilable, you know, uh, request will reveal that they discriminated against student housing and they are really against it and people are against it. Um, I appreciate personal concerns shared here. Uh, uh, folks have expressed concerns tonight from my valued neighbors who I will continue to cherish and value and respect uh, and appreciate that you came out tonight. And, and fear, you know, and, and fear not, there will be nothing uh, to worry about with this uh, residence as your neighbor. Um, but 
Uh, you know, I just want to proceed forward within the laws. I'm not asking for a variance. We've gone through various iterations that have been costly and both time and direct and indirect costs. And um, I'm happy to be to, to accommodate your wishes as best as I, as best as I can. And, uh, okay. Greenery is no problem. Okay. Uh, so um, shrubs and trees at every side is no problem. Okay. Um, Thank you. I did promise that I would answer your questions. It's like a stop. Um, I'll do so to the best of my ability since I, you raised your hand. Um, you asked a question about how the property will be listed, and I assume you mean from the assessor's point of view? Um, no, I'll tell you why I'm okay. asking the question. Okay, I got please a go. bill from the village yep. about a year ago, uh, I mean a letter, and it was an application for a landlord. Now I have a grandson living with me. Whose business is that? All of a sudden I'm going to be a landlord? What is he going to be to buy stores? Okay, okay, all right. Stores? Just take a step. Um, I can't speak to the letter you may have received. I don't know about well, it. It's I sent it back with okay. a bad on it. <laughs> That's certainly your prerogative. Um, I'm not sure why it was sent to you, and I, as I, it's really not our within our purview. Um, so I can't. If I, what I can tell you is the way the village building department operates is if somebody is has a residential property that they have chosen to <coughs> rent out um, and there are a number of different categories but if somebody is not living in the home it's not owner occupied and they rent it out then they are required legally to register with the building department with the village and in so doing there are certain fees that they incur they're required to undergo an annual safety inspection um, and there are other things that the building department then is entitled to, to do to ensure that codes are enforced. Um, but whether somebody is in, lives in an owner-occupied home or the property is not owner-occupied but is, but is lived in by tenants, um, there is still a whole body of zoning code that the building department enforces, the code enforcement people in the building department enforce that have to do with quality of life issues in terms of keeping your property clean, in terms of noise, in terms of um, any issues that people would find um, troublesome regardless of who's carrying out those particular things. And so we have, we have mechanisms in which people can, res can uh, um, file complaints or, or contact the the building department in order to deal with that. I just, I want to. It's still designated as a residence. It, it is designated as a residence. It's not a hotel or a motel. No, it's not a hotel or a motel. That wouldn't be allowed. And um, I, I do know, I can say anecdotally, that it's my understanding that there are at least two properties in this same block of North Mannheim that are non owner occupied rentals one of which I believe has a sterling reputation and one maybe occasionally has some issues. Um, and I, um, that's, all I I'm, that's all I'm free to say. Um, and so the planning board is not, as the applicant has pointed out, the, the planning board doesn't make its decision based on what the applicant tells us they're choosing to do with their property. Um, however, the planning board does have the responsibility to look at properties um, in terms of how they might be used in the future. And um, so as we get further on with this application, we will be looking at potential impacts, a number of which you all have raised this evening, and trying to determine whether or not there are ways to mitigate those impacts that would ensure that your quality of life is not compromised as a result of what somebody else, one of your neighbors, is choosing to do. That's, that's the best that we're capable of doing. Um, and I'll just quickly ask my attorney if I've missed anything or stepped out of line here. Okay. Sure. One, we don't have a designation student rent anywhere in our... That's correct. Zone. 
So the idea of rental is rental. Whether it be a student, whether it be a professional, whether it be a retiree, rental is a rental. Uh, number two is that also required when it's a non-owner occupied building is local management. Mm -hmm. So there is a local manager for every property that's non-owner occupied. Um, and let me tell you, the police are um, very good about contacting those people. And after a while, you know, if a house becomes a problem house, um, our local police are very good about maintaining that. I, I, I have one next door to me too. Um, but there is no such thing as being turned into a student rental. So this doesn't make this any different than a house. I live over on Elgin Avenue and the house has none to it. We don't have none rentals either. Um, we have house rentals. And this will be a house rental. It will be residentially zoned. How can you compare non-students to students? I, I mean, they're people. That's right, they're people. And, and I've, got some, I've got some students who are extremely good we're, the, the point I want to make is that um, an applicant is, we've had applicants who have specifically told us in the past that they are not planning to live in the house, they are planning to rent it out. And that's their prerogative to tell us that. And um, on the other hand, that's not a requirement. Um, we can't, we don't, we can't make our decisions based on what a particular applicant tells us because somebody might say this isn't I plan to live in the house and they may live in the house for five years something may happen and they choose to sell the house and they sell it to somebody who then decides to rent it out that's entirely fair and legal and um, so we have to make our decision about a particular application based on its um, meeting the code, which is how it gets to us in the first place. If it doesn't, it's not going to come to in front of us unless they're seeking a variance. But then we look at the potential impacts of it. I mean, that's, our, that's the responsibility we've been charged with. And so I just want to reassure you that we will be looking at the impacts that you raise, the impacts that we discern, and um, trying to find ways to mitigate those in order to make it feasible. Um, to ensure that uh, people's quality of life and property values are not going to be negatively impacted. Rick. Uh, let me just look, look up one other thing. Sure. Um, while you're looking that up, I have a quick question for you all. Um, your pardon, site, your pardon site, me, that's the village council, right? Yes, it is. I have his name? Uh, sure, Richard Golden. Oh, Richard Golden. Thank you. Um, your site plan and in one place indicates this is going to be five bedrooms and elsewhere indicates it's six bedrooms. Could you confirm for us what it's going to be? Um, you'll also need to resubmit your application because in numerous places it says five bedrooms and nowhere does it actually say six bedrooms. Does that include the fees you want me to? Or just uh, the revise it, or just the ed re edit, edit it. Give you'll it need to submit a new document. You'll need to submit an application that accurately reflects what it is you're going to do. If there's an app, if there's a fee adjustment, that's something with the building department. I have no idea. Um, but but anyway, okay. Um, but I, because of the change in number of bedrooms. All I know is yeah. that this is what I can tell you. Um, on your application, it says proposed one family residence with five bedrooms, but the house itself says proposed six bedrooms. The, I mean, the purpose of the site plan is for the parking, so the parking is a contiguous area. That the purpose for the site address. plan is everything that you're proposing to do on okay. the site. It's okay. more than just the parking. Okay. Fair you're missing all the things. Okay. All right. So, all right. so uh, that would be great. I, we never got any written comments. I did get a phone call on Friday uh, from Mr. Gilmore. Um, a lot of the things that he raised I don't think are issues or were addressed. He okay. mentioned uh, having shrubs. Can stuff. I? Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I'm so giving you information, and yep. you don't. Uh, where is your? So we'll incorporate here. whatever comments you give us tonight, and gladly. So I just would ask that. So on part four, site plan information at the top, proposed use says five bedroom, two bath, single family residence. Um, 
so the simplest thing for you to do is to modify, to go through the application carefully and modify any, update any place where it says five bedrooms and indicate that it's six. We'll do In so. the application as well as the site plan. Yes, sir. Um, okay. Well, let me begin by saying that um, the applicant cannot simply sit back and say, well, I'm going to have people there and, and that's good enough because they're um, in this zone you have permitted as of right um, single family and two family developments. You have as a special permit multifamily. So if in fact having more, if he has to designate to you whether or not it's a single family, two family or a multifamily because there are different requirements that come in. The special permit um, for uh, multifamily has to comply with the special permit conditions of your zoning code. I have not looked at all of those to see whether or not it complies, um, but the applicant certainly does have to tell you whether or not it's a single family. It is. Fitting within the definition of family in the zoning code. It's uh, the way the layout is, is uh, I'm not talking about layout. Talking the, there is, there's a definition of family in the zoning code. If you're saying that it's a single family, that's fine. Your application will be judged on single family. But then if you have other than a single family is defined in the village code, then you're going to be in violation because you're only going to be approved for a single family. So I think that, and I'm not trying to trip you up, I think you need to think about it, speak with ever, whoever you need to speak with, but you need to advise this board before an approval of whether or not um, you are asking for an approval as a single family two-family or multi-family? It is absolutely a single family. Clearly okay. a single family. Okay, I just want to advise you that then you cannot have more than what is allowed as a single family. Understood. Okay. Right? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So that was the co uh, council's comments for single family. Um, and, and it is a single family that's confirmed. Um, Mr. Zeeler, site plan and application and to be revised for uh, to clarify the six bedrooms and reapply if necessary to follow up with the building department. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have any specific questions? Uh, where are the water and sewer lines on this? That is just a survey from the engineering staff. Okay. Actually, on the site plan. No, this is the cycle, it's not here. Um, where's, where's the house sewer, I, I know where it is, I can tell you. They need, they need to, to, it needs to be on, on there. Be on you the need to put them on here. Okay, utilities on the site. What about refuge? Are we gonna put, is there a the refuge bins are over there on the left hand bottom corner. There's a, a number one, enclosure. Mr. Stephens, utilities on site plan. There's an existing refuse treatment over here. There is a fenced area over there that. Wow. Is all pre existing? Utilities on yeah, site plan, it refuse is. area. It is current. So we wouldn't get out on the current. We wouldn't currently allow that. It's, so it's, it's existing. And existing. Will that be sufficient? You'll need to determine if the size of that is sufficient for the proposed additional uses. That was obviously designed, I believe that was designed for when this was a two bedroom house. You need to determine if you're going to continue to use garbage cans or if you're going to be using a dumpster and if you are then you'll need to relocate that. That can't be located right there on the street. It's going to be behind the side line. So it'll have to and and it has to be sufficient um, to handle the use there. So that should okay. you should determine that and then place it in an appropriate place. Let's figure out if there's uh, formal recommendations for a single family six bedroom home. Uh, if it's prescribed we'll follow it and enlarge it as necessary. So that's refuse container, utilities on site plan. Refuse well, enclosure and capacity. If we don't feel that one container is good enough. If right, currently it fits two. It fits two large of, you know, the ones that the waste management companies and others uh, pull up the, the flip top plastic bins. So those are the role. Uh, I think. Yeah, so it's too large. So if it needs to be enlarged, we'll, we'll look at it. It will propose something reasonable. Um, and. Um, We'll do what you say. Sure. Other things? 
Uh, and the parking lot is just going to be gravel. It's not going to be paved. Yeah, we're not going to pave. That's yeah. correct. Correct. Okay, uh, are you want to put a note on here saying that? Okay. Paved? Nope. It's that. listed as a gravel driveway, and then the existing is listed as an asphalt. Yeah, I know. We've had problems with that. It's just to We'll include a block of text. We'll add a block of text since it's going to be edited anyway, just very clearly saying that. Is that it's all right? It's not to be paved. Yeah, we can do that as absolutely. Yeah. Is that okay, Kim? Okay. So note as gravel, include the block of text. Um, yeah, at this point, it doesn't come before our board, so we want to pay for the gravel or something. So we're going to look at sure. that type of uh, drainage and we'll get put it on there. Um, Are you, do you have any drainage comments uh, tonight, or would the, could they be forthcoming later? If it was blacktop, I'd have some comments okay, on it. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, why no, I want yeah. to see that block on Yes, sir. Yep. Got it. Then you'll have that there. It'll be gravel. Crushed stone. All stone screening and crushed stone. Okay. Now, um, there's a proposed carport that will have some drainage, um, and that's going to be uh, supplying the trees on the east side. This that we're gonna plant. Yeah. So it's just going to, so the, the, the grade is, you know, it should go down this way. Right. So there's going to be a gutter here, right over here, and the downspout is dispersing this way. This is a big area. It's bigger. And but if this stays dry, I don't know if I can't speak for my neighbor, Nick, uh, uh, but this mm -hmm. has never been wet. This is not wet at all, at least in the large area. It's still back here, and it's going to have a lot of foliage anyway. So I think it'll be fine to pick up the carport. Uh, there was a, uh, uh, Mr. Gilmore did ask, uh, not change subject to take you off track, about what's going to be proposed now and what do you want to do in, by July 2020. Uh, obviously, the parking is going to be provided right away to be able to let me get the bedrooms right away. Uh, what, are, what is optional and that I want extra time to consider is this uh, future patio shed sauna area and, and possibly the family room if I don't do it concurrent with the second floor renovation. Uh, but everything else is going to proceed speedily. So the carport and the sauna, so the parking will be provided. It's that carport structure that I want extra time on, and that's going to ha have that extra drainage component. So we can give you elevations on that. Mr. Gilmore mentioned you want to see what it looked like. We'd be happy to provide some elevations. That's a, it's an additional feature. You know, as we've gone back to draw, I mean, Kim charges me. She's not a relative or anything. So, uh, uh, but, uh, so I've, I've taken the opportunity to add things that I might want here. And I'll tell you something, and I'm glad my neighbors are here. Um, number one, if it were a rental, going to be a rental at some point in the future, I have an excellent history as a, a landlord, having uh, tenants who's been great. Excuse me, all right. I'm going to cut you off. Yeah, okay? that's fine. This is not a free-for-all discussion. All right, that's all right. I'd all right. like you to so reserve. I'm on track. Can, can you, I've been on track. Can you close your mouth, please? Thank you. I'd like you to answer our comments, please and try to stay on point. Okay. Thank you. We have Thank other you. applicants after you, and you this, know, this like concept of approving things three or four years out in the future, is this something new to the planning board? It's a discussion. I'm having a site plan that has things that are proposed as opposed to. I, I think we've done it like with your site plan with the. Um, and I'm suffering because of it. I got, a, I got a garage that I probably never will build that's on a site plan that I probably should just have it removed. So we, we've started, I think, in a few instances to entertain the notions of having aspects of site plan that are not completed within the statutory time frame for completing work within a building permit. So there's been some flexibility shown in some instances, as long as it's clear on the plan. The, the difference is that when I was building my home, I didn't want to build the garage, so we went to remove it. We took a look at it. We said, "Well, wait. I think it gave me 18 months to re-decide that, and then we have to review the site again." Um, but it's different than this. This is saying someday, three years from now, I might build another room on the house. Someday, three years from now, I might build a cabana and pool on a property. Yeah. Um, what crystal ball do we have in terms of zoning that says three years from now that's even going to be a permitted type of use? Yeah, it's a good point. After yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm asking you to agree to it now, and we've obviously agreed to it not being there because it's not there now. So right. we've covered both bases. It gives me the option. Well, it's a discussion no, it's that we should have with it. And I've got that language from council. It also says, or no, no, I asked. Local zoning law 
change. You got what letter from, what language from council? About um, to be constructed by July 2020 or before a relevant change in the zoning law. No, so that wouldn't have asked, come, that didn't come we, from it our council. It came through the, your, your it staff, our, it came through your staff, but when I was told as a, as a uh, directive from the council mm -hmm. that, that that language would have to be there, Kim, right? That's verbatim, I gave you that language. It has, so that basically if you change Are you saying zoning, that the building um, inspector gave you that no, no, language? No, not the building inspector. Um, I can't remember what it is exactly, but it was through um, phone calls um, and basically uh, just to have that qualifier. Because I could put it on there, it, basically the site plan has to be done in two years. So I wanted a little extra time and I was at, told that um, the, out, the village's attorney said that if we include the language that um, it is to be constructed by the date we propose, the owner, uh, or a relevant change in the zoning law. This way, we didn't preclude the, the, the village or town uh, deciding they don't want any swimming pools or sheds or saunas, so that you can, you know, you could still pass that law. I'm not grandfathered in. In other words, you're not giving me approval that precedes any subsequent change in the law, but it's just giving me a little extra time to implement this with me. I was turning into a, a master that, plan for a single-family house, which is really this is what it is. This does not look like a rental property, and I just interviewed for a job up here. To, to live okay, in this Mr. house. Mr. Beltros, <laughs> uh, again, I, I ask that you re reserve your comments. No, uh, two comments to address the concerns no, of all my neighbors who are here. No, excuse me. I'm done, fine, that's fine. Listen. But they, they, these are issues I'm that gonna, they brought I'm up. going to either ask, we're going to stop the application now. We'll stop the discussion this evening. No, no. If you cannot. I'll, I'll stop talking. If it happens once more, then we'll just terminate the application for this evening and you'll come back in two weeks if we decide that you'll be on the agenda, okay? but. I'm not going to spend an hour going through what should be a relatively simple procedural matter. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I never made such a representation. I'm confident that you never made such a reference. And, um, and, and, and in fact, um, I would be very much against um, the planning board approving any such language on a site plan. You have before you a request by the applicant that he wants to build certain things. And you had to look at that. And if you believe that he has the right to go ahead and put them there, um, and within your discretion, you say, yes, these are the elements that we are going to approve when you finally make an approval. The code is going to dictate how long that approval is going to be, will last if he doesn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. right? That's not up to this board. This board doesn't have the power to say, if in fact it was going to be good for 12 months, you don't have the power to say, no, you can only have it for eight months or that you can only have it for 16 months or you will have it for 16 months. So this board should not have any such qualifiers as part of a plan that they will approve. Sure. It's my understanding that if there's a request for that, it would have to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. And One way that it could go. Okay. So. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that there was a proposal for a pool in the backyard, an above ground pool. Um, is that correct? Just want to confirm that. We took, we took out the pool. You had specifically yeah. mentioned when you yeah. were describing this, answer. you referred to the future patio shed sauna area, but you said something about a pool there. If there was an above ground pool, we'll go on the patio possibly. But okay. That's just a okay. possibility that would take up that footprint right now we're pretty maxed out on our footprints. Yeah. So okay, well that was that was that was why I asked. Yeah. So it wouldn't be in an, addition, in an right. additional foot item that's not already shown here. It would, it would be within this 360 square foot area. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Um okay, uh did you have other you mentioned utilities and refuse, other things? Um I mean, I, I don't think lighting is an issue on this. Um, I'm not going to change any additional lighting to this as a parking lot. I mean, that there would be some some lights for the um, carport, obviously, so that when you leave your car, you can see it. And you have to show it on the side. Yeah. So we would we would. That, that, that definitely has an impact on the neighbor. It would not be shiny. Okay. So we so would sure. so we would need. So what are we is have um, we to kind of light here mm -hmm. on the patio. Okay. Yep. So, is this, we're not approving, right? This is another proposed building? I would expect that everything that we're showing on the site plan, we're looking for approval so that the so term we'll that is allowed, that these structures would be possible to be to be built within the term that's allowed yeah. for the application. I mean, we can, 
if this is what they wish to put in front of us, that's their discretion. The, the issue about the specific language here is we've just gotten an opinion from our attorney about that. We can deal with that separately, but if they're interested in building these things, that's what we may certainly have a right to consider it. But it wouldn't, for instance, say future. Just yeah, it would say. The language to yeah. say proposed. It would say proposed uh, yes. patio sets on it somewhere. Right. Um, <coughs> we would definitely need to see an elevation of the carport and and any elements in there, such as lighting, um, because it is a it's going to be a relatively large structure. Sure. We need to know what the height of it looks like and mm -hmm. what the what it would look like from different angles. So sure. that would Absolutely. be necessary. Um, I just want to point out a mistake in your math that goes slightly in your favor on your lot coverage schedule. Thank you. The last item under non-permeable drive proposed, you say 1,473 square feet, and you list that as 8.2%. It can't be 8.2 because that's a smaller square footage than the house, which is 1,568, which is 8. But the actual number is 7.4%, not 8.2. We'll get that with the numbers. So Thank you, Robert. should give you a... a Bring your total coverage down to below 20%. What is this? That's a tree. That's the famous tree. That's a tree. Okay. No, that's not the famous tree. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, it is. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. It is, no, you are correct. Symbols yeah, yeah. for deciduous trees. I didn't have that before. Yeah. Um, okay, other comments? Dennis? So, I'll just make one comment. Uh, if you would. A couple observations that you haven't talked about. And um, that would be, I heard tonight that the species proposed for there's about 12 trees shown for planting, so it sounds like it's an evergreen. So I would check whether you want the, the types of uh, species that will be planted. We have landscaping guidelines are primarily for non-residential type development, but they could offer a guide in a situation like this where you're trying to um, mitigate the possible impacts of such as headlights and mm -hmm. cars coming and going. So um, one, one consideration is to request the, the species mix and any other characteristics of plantings you want. The other thing is, and it's minor, it's not in our site plan submission standards, but there's a, a textual scale, and um, if you could throw a graphic scale on, I'm not even like a fan of a textual scale, but a graphic scale, when we oftentimes work over a of 11 by 17s, can be desirable if you can do it. And then I know there was discussion that there the, um, the driveway and parking area is gravel. However, just making you aware that that is part of the lot coverage mm -hmm. and limitation, and we don't treat in within our zoning gravel um, packed areas, such as for driveway areas, uh, as pervious, but rather we treat it as impervious. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. <coughs> they have included as part of their lot coverage. That's where we allow it to get blacktop without right. all reviews. So, that's so um, okay, so next steps. Um, one thing I'd, I'd like to ask is whether you'd be amenable for the planning board to do a site visit. I'd um, love it. Sure. Okay. You're so, we'll, um, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll have our secretary contact you with by email and um, you can give some possible dates and times that would work for you or for sure. somebody representing you here. Sure. Um, and then we'll get that out to the planning board members and we'll pick a time. So I appreciate that very much. Sure. It's really helpful for us to be Gladly. able to Thank see you. things on site. Sure. Thank you. Um, the second thing is that um, mm -hmm. we had discussed about submitting this to the Ulster County Planning Board. I would like to go ahead and do that. Um, they'll take a look at it mostly in terms of its relationship to Main Street, which is their
purview. And um, the reason that I'm choosing to do that in this case is because um, this is one of the few north-south running streets in that part of the village that has a traffic light at the end. And as a result, it's, uh, it's a, already a heavily used artery for people moving between two different north-south running roads being Main Street and Henry Du Bois. I'm sorry, uh, so it's one of the few north-south running, north -south running streets. Yeah, yeah so, the, so this section of the village was built kind of as a grid, um, and Mannheim, of all the streets running um, north and south, along there, North Mannheim is the only one that has a traffic light at Main Street. All the others, such as Oakwood and Mill Rock and Prospect, they have stop signs at the end. And as a result, um, it, it's clear that Mannheim is more heavily used than those streets for people who are trying to get between primarily Henry Du Bois and Main Street. And so for that reason, I'm going to recommend that we submit this to the Ulster County Planning Board. Um, it meets the criteria to submit it to them. Um, and I think that um, we're going to ask them to specifically look at the expansion of this from two bedrooms to six in terms of how the potential impacts on parking and traffic and safety along there could um, and get their feedback about that. So that's the proposal for that. Um, so, and then the other thing we'd like to do is set a public hearing for your application. Um, so I'd like to make a motion then that we um, determine this application to be complete, that we submit it to the Ulster County Planning Board, and that, um, let's see, if we, they would look at it, their first meeting in July. So. We could set a public hearing then for what the first meeting in August. Is that or the second meeting in um, the in second July? In July. Oh yeah, we might have comments back by then. Right. Okay. They have 30 days, but they often get back sooner. Okay. So let's set it for the July 18th. I believe it is. Okay. So the motion is uh, the application is complete submit this to the Ulster County Planning Board and set a public hearing for 7 p.m. on Tuesday, July 18th. So we'll use the materials that we have now for that referral, is my understanding. Um, would you all, well, they have a little bit of time, so if you want to update the materials based mm -hmm. on the comments tonight, that would be better. Will we be receiving a formal list of the required revisions? Um, Just so we can be sure that we didn't miss anything uh, we don't usually do that, but if you would like to um, send an email to me of what you got down, then I'd be happy to review that and if there's anything we missed. How do you double check that we have a common request? Well, we have, I mean, I haven't been writing it down. Okay. Our, our secretary has it, and so we can certainly. Double check. Okay. I'm just used to getting a list of requests from planning board what they think their changes. Okay, well. Um, and sometimes when we get what you think is the final flat, this is always the final flat. No, I understand. When the term I complete, for example, does not mean you're done. Oh, I understand that. That's why I was saying that we had all of your so requirements to make sure it could be as complete as possible. Sure, no, I get that. One after the That's day. fine. Um, okay, uh, yeah. So we'll send you something. Oh, I that's see. Fine. I'm sure between the both of us, we probably address everything. But you know. no, I understand. That's fine. Okay. I appreciate your you're wanting to be diligent and thorough. Mm -hmm. We'll um, so we'll, com we'll communicate and make sure that you get it. So okay. we'll no, hold we, off. We sending. need to get it to the the county. I can't remember their um, timing. Usually, we're ahead of schedule. So backwards planning about 14 days before the fifth puts us around the. I guess the 20th of yes. uh, of June. So I'd appreciate it if we could get it a little sooner than the 20th, if we can work expeditiously over the next few days, because I got to get it there in mail. Okay. And 
as always, if you can give us PDFs of stuff, it's always so easy because then I can refer I, I it to I them electronically, sure, the documents, and they've yep. got it through our new uh, sort of prototype method. I think we right. submitted both ways. Yeah, and so we'll, com we'll communicate with you tomorrow. We'll just need time for Christina to okay. put together the notes. Okay. Um, so there was a, I made a motion. <coughs> oh, so move, second. Move, Both. second. Any more discussion about it? Oh. What was the date? What's that? What was the date that was set? So the date for the public hearing is Tuesday, July the 18th at 7 p.m. So if we don't have our um, results by then, conceivably you could we'll, um, continue, we'll continue the, the public hearing. Or? Yep. Well, but you don't need to keep the public hearing open. Close the public hearing. And the only thing that you can't do is you can't make your decision. Right. Okay. That's fine. So you also should uh, type the action as a type two. Yes. Um, I sort of feel like we may have. Um, we did that actually in yeah. April. Did we? Yep. Okay. Um, and nothing has changed that would alter. No, no, that. no. Nothing's changed. I didn't have that down. Yep. Which um, application is that? Your application. I couldn't hear what he is. Oh, was in terms of seeker. Oh, okay. To make a seeker determination, and it's a type two action, which okay. but we already did that. Okay. So, um, okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. second. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we'll be in communication about the details. Mm -hmm. Once you update that, then. Um, our planner will get it to Ulster County. We have a public hearing set. Um, we'll be in touch with you about a site visit. And uh, so then we will uh, be seeing you sometime soon, but probably not here. Again Do you before. prefer I be there, or if it was during the week, maybe would Kim, or if it were guys? That's entirely ask, up to you. If you, you want me to be there to ask, answer questions, or do you, it's no, just really, you just need to see for yourself? The uh, site plan really should speak for itself. Okay. But all right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll go, we'll. You know, we all have the in front of us. I, if Do you prefer weekdays or um, weekends? I, I think probably weekends will be easier. We Great. might give you a, we might give you a, once we've established a date, I will probably give you a short list of things that we'd like marked out. So the parking area, for instance, we'd probably yes. like the corners yes. marked yep. out. Yep. Um, yep. If you have some dimensions on the carport, we might ask that you be able to identify the height and rel location of that, those sorts of things. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Alrighty. All right, next up is PB 1712. Ken, if you want to come up. Okay, so you just want to summarize for the board what you've got planned here? Yeah, um, basically. Uh, no change in the footprint of what's already uh, there as gravel and what's been in use for 10 years. Um, I have uh, a house, there are uh, five bedrooms upstairs, and there's uh, one uh, uh, small studio apartment downstairs. It's been for 10, for 10 years, it's been used as a, as a rental, uh, sometimes students, sometimes not. Um, and I wanted uh, six cars to be able to park there. Uh, that's what has been there. Mm -hmm. um, and I recently decided that it might be uh, cleaner and nicer. I'd get less uh, uh, erosion if it was uh, uh, paved. It came to my attention. Somebody saw uh, a paving guy out there kind of talking, talking about it. And it came to my attention uh, through uh, Brian that uh, Yeah, I, I, you know, my bad. I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't aware of it. So okay. I'm trying to correct that situation, but I'm not trying to change anything that's that you could, you know, with the photographs I submitted. Right. There's no change in what's. It's. Uh, uh, I think we have the setback. We have the uh, the uh, proportion. Okay. Of, of lot coverage, uh, all within zone. Uh, I would be taking down uh, a couple of trees. Here. That are in the middle of the ground. Yeah, in the middle there. Okay. Are you? There's one in the corner here that. Wow, and make it easier. Uh, but uh, basically, this is what uh, I, I, I just thought it would be uh, look nicer uh, and uh, be uh, better if it was uh, paved.
paved. That's what I'd like to do to okay. uh, and, and have the permission to put the cars on. Are you altering the the width of the driveway curb cut in any way? Or are you going to be able to just? To, uh, I would be altering the, the width. To, to, uh, I, I think I need eighteen feet. The, the, the I mean the actual. I'm just looking at the photograph, and it looks like it's you've got a fair bit of sort of. It's pretty open there now. It's pretty open. I wonder if you can't actually make it a little tidier and maybe recover some of some lawn as a result of it. Sure. I mean you've got trees here and it looks like things where people drive are getting awfully close to that area. Um, well, uh, just, uh, like plant it I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, you'll have to measure it. Um, I don't, I didn't look at the scale here, so well, I don't know what the I, width uh, is. The architect says I need 18 feet here okay. to make it legal, but uh, yeah, I could. Uh, but I, and I don't know what you actually have, I guess that's the question. Yeah. So if it turns out there's an opportunity to recover some, sure. some green space, it, mm -hmm. would, it would be great. Absolutely. So, um, Can I ask a question? What I just, oh, I'm sorry. regarding the 18 feet, I, I think that um, in zoning standard 21243F is that residential driveways yeah. are permitted to have one driveway which shall not exceed 18 feet, not cover more than 30% of frontage. I think I actually was involved with a case with Rick where I may have advocated a completely different case that the driveway had to be at least 18 feet. So I think that the architect and his team may have um, misconstrued based on a different case. Oh. So um, that's just some contextual clarification. Oh, okay. I mean, if we can, if, if it's, I mean, 18 feet is enough for two cars passing each other, which is probably not something that's going to be happening much in your. It does not. And right. In, in my Experience so, in 10 years, it has so not it, been So it would actually be nicer if we could find a way to shrink the driveway down. Yeah. Um, you know, and if, if mean, you're I willing sure. to, to actually try to recover some, some greenery in there, that would be fine. So um, let, let's. That would be fine with me. I'll check with the building inspector about that and see what, yeah. what he says. And then if. I think that. You'll find the building inspector will support it because I know he's cited 21243F4. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm not looking to, you know, make, make a big, you know, <coughs> parking lot out of this. Yeah. I'm looking to make it as unobtrusive as possible. Um, so the proposal, I, I know you wanted to ask, but I was just, so you've got six spaces proposed. Mm -hmm. The sketch plan shows basically three, three, four, five. There's four here. Oh, there's four. One, two, yeah, three, four, be four, two, two there. Okay, and that's generally how people have been parking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll leave that. Um, and these dimensions seem fine. But yeah, if there's a, if we can shrink the, the entranceway. Yep. Um, and then sort of fan it yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. I will talk to. Uh, okay. Uh, my landscape guy. All right, and I'll check with Brian about. Reducing that from 18 feet. What is this? That is a shed that was there, uh, a small shed that was there on the property when I when I bought it. Where do you put your garbage? The garbage. We and I'm and I'm baiting you because I live around the corner and I can tell you that nine days out of ten it's right there. Yeah, they will. And overflowing. They, they have it here, and then they're supposed to put it out on Friday. On Fridays. And come back. And it doesn't. I mean, it's a real problem with your house. Okay. I'm surprised the mayor who lives next door hasn't been on the case anymore, but I have not gotten but, uh, a complaint about it, but I will well, take it. Well, for the most part, your tenants are pretty nice tenants. They're pretty good. They don't park on the lawn. There's no couches out front. No, no, I'm, I'm not trying to, they're, they're, no, they've been nice. Yeah. You know, garbage is an issue, though. Okay. But that garbage can drive uh, me crazy. Okay. It's supposed to be behind the facade of the house until garbage day. Then you have 24 hours to get it. it down to the curb and back. So pay some kid 10 bucks a month or something. I, I will have it taken care of. Um, fair? Yeah. Okay. It's just, uh, other, in, no, other issues? Absolutely fair. Dennis, anything? 
Okay. I mean, normally I would have talked about more screening, but he's done good. He's got a lot of setback here. Yeah. Back here. There is okay. a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot uh, of vegetation, vegetation there. behind there, like woods, you know, kind of mm -hmm. wild, uh, uh, surrounding the whole house. It's uh, almost a half acre. No, you've kept, okay. the, you've kept a good property, but that garbage can yeah. be We painted it, but did a new roof, uh, have a guy that does, you know, Sand um, color shutters. So. Okay. So I think a lot of heat for that, and um, <laughs> if you have a real objection to it, I will change that. Hey, it stands out. Okay, <laughs> um, I wanted to share this with you. So your sketch plan is dated. Um, I didn't see this before. Um, the fifteenth of May, and there was this email exchange between your architect and the building inspector on the eighteenth of and nineteenth of May that I just wanted, so you can have that, um, that would identify specific site plan things that we'll need. So they'll just need to bring this up to, I mean, this is, this is fine for our purposes now, but ultimately. I do have the Yeah. Um, so anyway, you can keep that um, and we'll just need that. Um, ahead of a public hearing in order to okay. be able to, to do final approval. Um, you've looked at the planner's memo. Um, um, if we, do you, hey, did you see this? I didn't, the, the policy is for me to provide my No, that's fine, that's the fine. Board. Okay, and I think I, when I started my job, I was, yeah, yeah, no, I apologize. They weren't shared with. No, applicants. I thought you, he made a, you made a reference about something, and my mistake. Okay, so um, just a handful of items on here. I'll just go through, and then I'll give you this. Um, and some of, a, a number of these will just, can go right on the site plan. Um, so they'll, there'll be a, pull the site plan out, the sketch plan out. So. So, thanks. So, have the setbacks shown reflect the frontage on Tricor and have the corner lot clearance area labeled? Um, so, floor plan, um, I think if you could just have a note on the actual site plan that indicates the number of bedrooms. Yes, uh, okay. There, there is a plan on file that shows that. Oh, there in, is in the buildings department. When, when yeah. But, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, we can pull that. I'll just. So, do we want to reference that on the site plan? Have that reference? Yeah. Um, that you know, I am. You know, having just said that, I'm not sure it shows the entire uh, thing. There was an addition at one point uh, many years ago, and uh, it might just show that. But I'll, I'll uh, make sure there's a site. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to the architect about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I mean it's. Or just as I said, if you can indicate a note on the site plan that says, you know, two family house, one bedroom on ground, one bedroom on the lower level, five bedrooms on the upper, something of that sort, so that we have it actually in there. And I'll look at the street file and see. Um, <coughs> we will classify this later this evening. Um, and number four, same thing, we'll take care of that. Um, so we actually do have a survey now that the applicant has just found, and so we will, um, or just provided. So, so and that was that. a point of discussion that I, I, the building inspector raised with me. He went out and looked for boundaries, and yeah, he said I he did find a, he did find some. He said. So we appear to have a different lot configuration. I know, but I, I found the survey. Yeah. So Ken has a survey, I, which I'll, I'll provide, which shows it, a, a rectangle. And it he, seemed, he mentioned it to me. Yeah, and it seems consistent with what Bryant found. Um, I think, but I, maybe I'm misspeaking. He um, said he thought it cut in and yeah, diagonal, he thought it, but, uh, but my survey doesn't show that. Right, okay. That um, so the parking area, as I said, we'll see if there's some way to shrink down the, the apron uh, where it meets the street and the, maybe the overall driveway yeah. so that we can reduce that. Um, And it, as we noted, there 
it in the site plan that it would be helpful if there, because this is essentially a parking area, especially the cars that are facing south and the cars that are facing west, if we could just have them rough out vegetation so that we mm -hmm. know there's sufficient screening. Um, and I, um, item eight, which our planner is discussing sidewalk easements, he and I talked a little about that. We're not gonna require that, so you can scratch that item from your, from your list. Um, basically asking you to set aside property for future construction of sidewalk. Oh. Um, but I, I think that um, that's a, for a different matter, that's a, for a different time. Um, so that's all I have. So what we can do is um, we can finish the administrative stuff tonight and set a public hearing. Um, you said you're in no major rush. So, okay. Um, so if at this point then I'd like to make a motion this application is complete. Um, I'll, that, that. Uh, I'll make it heftier than just Oh, that. okay. So, that it's complete, um, that it's a type two action under seeker, uh, that it's exempt from referral to Ulster County Planning Board, and that we will set a public hearing for uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday, July 6th, 2018. 17? Yes. Yeah, it should be 17. Did I say 18? Yeah. yeah. You probably don't want to wait that long, so we'll say, <laughs> plus time. the dates would go inside. <laughs> yeah. what, 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 Let's try what Thursday, Thursday, July 6th, 2017. Thank you, all. Thursday, uh, July 6th. Okay, so that's the motion. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so yeah, because of July 4th, we're not meeting Tuesday that week. Right. Okay. So we're meeting Thursday. Um, okay, so I'll make all the. Yeah, so just ask your um, architect to go ahead and just modify the site plan or provide mm -hmm. us an actual site plan um, with those details. Um, and I will talk to Bryant tomorrow about the driveway, and I'll get back to you right away. So I'll have something for you by tomorrow. Yeah, so if you, do, if, you, if, you'll accept, you know, if you'll accept the narrower, I'll make it the narrower. Yeah, so, so and I'll let you know. Um, yeah. you know and I apologize about that. To go on. Oh, you're not the only one. But, but don't no, it's, it's no. a problem that we have. I, I apologize. Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks, Ken. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Uh, PB 1713, 51 Main Street. Dimitri and Richard, if you'd like to come up. How's it going? How are you doing? Good, how have you been? Okay. Good. Richard? Hi. Hi. Okay, so. So, um, you want to just give us a quick summary of uh, what you're, why you're here? Well, I was approved for a two-story restaurant in the apartment on the third floor. Yep. I found out my property tax is going to be around, so I was like, there's no way I could pay property tax and make money selling food. So, might as well make an apartment on the second floor just to pay off the property tax. Okay. So, that's why I'm here. All right. So, you're modifying the site plans to put in two apartments on the second floor, taking yes. out roughly 50, 49 seats of the restaurant. Correct. Um, one of the apartments is a one bedroom in the rear and a two bedroom in the front. Yes. Okay. Um, the third floor and the first floor and the kitchen are remaining unchanged. Correct. Okay. Except for the first floor, the stair is being removed. So and into the second floor restaurant. Right, of yeah. course, thank yeah. you. But other point. Point. Yeah. Saying well, like there's 30 seats on the first floor, now it's gonna be 50, 51. Okay, so you're reconfiguring the first floor. Okay, all right. So there's no change in the height of the building. Right, the exterior, exterior is unchanged right. except for? Windows. Uh, the balcony. There's a balcony that, that was gonna be on the second floor? Yeah, there, there was gonna be outdoor seating. Right. Yes. Now I'm gonna put the bedroom over there and have uh, patio doors set about three or four feet back from the property line. Okay. And it'll be a balcony for that one bedroom. 
the reason okay. for that balcony is that if we did lot line glass, uh, we'd have to do lot line glass. So send it back three feet for the fire code allows you to do glass. I see. If you set it, and then to set it's it back like a little the, more also to allow light and air into the Is that is that going to be on the rear or, or the west side? It's the west side. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. So the the built in balcony on the third floor, which comes off the north side more or less. That that's, remains. That state yeah, obviously that's there, but and then on the second floor it'll be just that enclosed, wherever you see right there. Yep. That's all it's gonna be. Okay. All right. Um the dumb waiter goes too, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the smart waiter. Well no, the smart waiter stays. The dumb waiter goes. Okay. Um so as you're aware, um Although there's a number of, I mean, it's, it's likely that in terms of sort of parking impacts, your parking will be, the parking impacts are, will probably be much less because you cut your restaurant use in half. However, there's 36 roof spaces for restaurant and one apartment. Now it's 23 right. for the remaining seats and the right. six for the apartment. So it's a reduction in 13. So the, the problem, though, from a code point of view is that the planning board has discretion over commercial parking. We do not over residential. Right. And um, unless you can supply the necessary six spaces for parking, which I don't believe you can, you'll have to go for a variance, which you're aware of, just for the record. Yeah. Um, and in addition, the additional retail, uh, excuse me, the additional residential also requires a certain square footage for the lot and you don't need that because of the size of the lot and so for that as well you'll need to go for a variance so we'll discuss that in a little while about those variances but it will require um, going to the zoning board of appeals um, uh, beyond that uh, there was some discussion by our building inspector about interpretation of the code about whether or not you could even have three apartments there under zoning in R2. Um, B2. Excuse me, in B2, thank you. I'm glad you guys are all here tonight. Uh, the conclusion of that seems to be after conversation with our attorney and then from our building inspector who sent us a memo today is that um, the number of apartments that you're proposing is allowed and right. fine, so that you shouldn't need to go for a variance for that. But you will <coughs> need to go for the parking and for the um, for the not having sufficient square footage for that number of of bedrooms. Um, so those are the main issues that I have. Um, Dennis or Rich, do you have specific things, questions at this point? This application? They're pretty difficult issues to deal with, even from a ZBA standpoint. I mean, being a new building and a new design building, you designed something that was not functional. Is that what you're telling us? Well, I, I just didn't, I didn't realize property taxes are going to be that high. When I bought the property, it was about $6,000, and now the assessor is assessing me right now the way it is, $26,000. It's, it's not the finished. building. It's the use of the building that can't pay the taxes. Which don't. You can pay it more with rental, with, with apartment rentals than you can by selling food. Yes. It's like, it's like I'm hiring another employee that's not doing work for me. That hardship is not something that was created by a building you purchased. Created by a building you designed, you had approved, you. So it's quite a hardship for the planning board to take a look at and say this is a self um, But I'm not going to speak for the CPA. I'm no, that's speak a, for us. Right. Had, had you come to us originally with the three apartments there and in, in the store, I don't know what the result would have been. Um, but basically, that's most of Main Street business on the first floor and yeah. apartments on the second floor. It would have been something that was, you know, easier to consider had the building not been built mm -hmm. than to go back and say, whoops, I'm not going to make enough money. I want to change it. Um, it's a 
very difficult one. And the parking is really an issue in that we have a requirement of residential that they not park on the streets over there. So we're going to be creating apartments for people that can't live in this because there's no place to park. Uh, unless you could show, and I think you're going to have a hard time showing this, you'd be able to, how are you going to park? How are you going to be, you know, the responsibility of the landlord is to have parking available in those apartments. Again, we have old pre-existing ones on Main Street, but they're pre-existing. They're grandfathered. But this is not. This is new. This is new planning. And um, we plan an obsolescence in here. We plan the fact that the we're going to put in two apartments for people who can live under today's normal circumstances, and that is that bar. So we're going to take a look and say, well, you know, we can, we can be rather liberal when it comes to the commercial part. Mm -hmm. Because as a business owner, if you're making a mistake, hey, 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 it's your business. But as a landlord, you I can't make a mistake. I saw it from both. I saw it from both. I saw it from both. I don't know how you're going to do that, but that's going to be the CDA problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know really mm -hmm. what issues yeah, are probably for us to consider, given that the ZBA is the one that's going to make these decisions. Right. Well, we're at this point we're sort of the the, the launching pad for that um, because it is a site plan modification, and and uh, you know our comments we we will need to make comments to the ZBA about this. So, um, your concerns. No, I mean, I, I understand the uh, predicament, um, but again, it's, it's kind of, it's out of our hands. It has to go to the CPA for the uh, variances. Um, I mean, I, I understand your comments. I respectfully disagree with most all of them. Um, I That's actually, good, so I like working with you, my I, I actually feel like, um, and it's always been troubling to me, I thought that um, having a hundred seat restaurant was ambitious for this town um, and I actually think so my concern always was that if the business failed that we would end up with a two-story vacancy um, I actually feel like this is a much more viable option for a downtown New Paltz but what, what about putting office space on the second floor instead of apartments um, the one thing residential doesn't require handicapped access in other words elevator uh, office does. So you sure that? Yeah, I confirmed it with the building inspector. So, right. um, what, what, when did you confirm that with? Within a week or so ago. Have another discussion with uh, Maybe two weeks because it was a threshold two under weeks ADA. There's a threshold under ADA. Yeah, I was wondering about that, but I just, yeah. It is only three apartments that made I mean, if you went into um, the karate school that was built down in you know, the front street? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no. There are offices on the second floor over a karate school. There's no handicap. There is no handicap. Because the threshold on, is based on the size of the building. And it is on the size of the building. It's, yeah. yeah, size of the building is not that big. Yeah. No, it's a, it's okay. a good point. Pro that would eliminate a really big problem you have in terms of parking because it would not put the parking in under commercial. commercial. Right. Then would it be back to planning board? And, well, ZBA would still have to look at it eventually. You guys would have a better record. You still have a density better. problem because you have yeah. two more uses. Right. Yeah, but mm. it would, it would it be easier? I would think so. I mean, I don't, to me, I don't mind. Okay. We, had, I don't, I don't we had abandoned it because we'd understood that, you know, we didn't want to do a 120-foot ramp. That wasn't, <laughs> yeah. we couldn't do okay. an elevator, but we thought, let's try the. All right, well, why don't, if. Maybe we should go and think about that. And make sure. It is that, an option. Yeah. Okay, it, it would, it's, is that, it's a good yeah. idea. It build out is nice sure. in a sense, um, too. You don't have two bathrooms, two kitchens, two. You know, yeah, for me, it would just be just. Raw bathroom. space with a bathroom. Right, it would be raw space and a well, bathroom, yeah. and, some, and then you could build some suit. Right. Um, which is there's a high demand for residential tenancy in, in the area, obviously. Yeah. Well, that's right. That was probably my other point. Look where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if, you know, well, at well, my age, I would want yeah. to live in that location. I grew up in that location. I grew up across the street from the corner now. It's a little building. That was Davis Corners. No, a t-shirt shop. It's got the mural. Oh, the make sure. You grew up that, in that's the where I grew up. Oh, okay. So I'm used to downtown Main Street <laughs> getting woken up at four in the oh, morning yeah. and <laughs> yes. whatever, you know, well, drunken songs are being sung, you know, it's, but that's going to be a difficult place for two apartments. Well, it's the glass I, has come a long way since, you know, yeah. double, triple grain game. 
pain glass, glass. <laughs> for uh, and one is on the back, but that's still the gas station. There is noise back there, but not as bad as Main Street. So I again, I, I feel like actually it would be a the, given the the view shed and the fact that these are brand new construction. I think these would actually be quite desirable residential. Get the tears. Whatever. Live on Lower Main Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hobble in um, from the bars. Another thing to look at. I have a question. So there are about two point three five spaces in the parking on the site, right? Because right. these two, the two point six five, the one point three five of the village. We've been looking at it as four. Uh, here's where I'm going. With four, you could theoretically do two apartments, right? Because two spaces for apartments. Isn't it one but you got three apartments. Right. No. No. I'm saying but you're have saying to if, to two. if you had two apartments, two yeah. bed, right? You could have I'm four not, spaces for four bedrooms. No, the owner and I don't. You know, this is dangerous because he might say, "Shut up." No, it's fine. <laughs> but no, I understand. Saying, is that another option if you consider four? He, you could yeah. get two apartments at least, and then that would help your budget. Or I mean, just do right. like the second floor, just uh, with office in the front. Or the you back. could have an office in the yeah. front and, a, and yeah. an apartment in the rear, or vice versa. Okay. Yeah. That's an option. No, the, no, no, no. the office idea. Residential requires the greatest amount of density. Okay. So if I could read. Office takes less density, so you yeah. have less of a variance for office than you need for an apartment. Right. Mm -hmm. The office doesn't require 24 hour parking to be made available. To you. The apartment does. Yeah. Fair so it changes on the parking. There's a couple of reasons for it. Yeah, so if you. If you want to think about a mixture of well, what do you guys want? <laughs> well, well, what do you guys want? Like as, as we've said, we have some. We what we want is is really not. Uh, I mean, we've given you some of our different opinions about downtown and what we think. I mean, there's certainly plenty of precedent for commercial on the first floor, residential and office on the upper floors. That's what the zoning calls for. There's plenty of. I mean, that's a working, functional uh, mixture of uses now on Main Street. Um, you know, in essence, that's what you were planning to do, and you're just sort of rejiggering that at this point. Um, but the difficulties, as Rich points out, have to do with the discretion that we have in terms of parking. We have discretion when it comes to commercial and retail. We don't have discretion for residential. And that is the difference between possibly going to the ZBA or not. Um, so and then for the density issue, it seems inevitable that you will need to go to the ZBA, but the degree of a variance that you're asking for is always important to consider. And so if your re density requirements for commercial is less than residential, then perhaps something that incorporates some or all commercial might turn out to be preferable for you. So you you should put your heads together and think about these different options. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like the smoothest is, is make it office. But, yeah. but you need to also we look at, get the floor obviously and this is complete, got nothing to do with us, but the reason you're here is for financial considerations. Um, and that to me is important not only for your pocketbook but also for the viability of the building on Main Street because we certainly would like your building in all respects to be successful and I mean, it helps the community it helps you and that's that's what it's about so um, so you need to also look at it from your own you know you need to do your own dollars and cents calculations we can't help you with that um, and just figure out what works for you and if residential is the only way to go then you know then we'll proceed with that um, but if you have other options then do consider them so I mean, right now my options I'm like either have it for two apartments or just all office or office or residential either one will work for me okay at, at this point okay. either one all three options work for me okay well so if you know that already that's great then uh, really what you'll want to do is is just figure out what makes. I just thought the office. I couldn't do the office because of the the ADA refinement. Well, if that turns out to be not the case, um, then you know. I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Well, then then that works because we discussed it. But we. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I nice changed the regulations all the time, but back when I used to do a lot of consulting on that, yeah. you would have done all right. Um, okay. Great. Thank you. 
So why don't you decide about that and then um, let us know what you want to do and if uh, to whatever extent it requires a, a zoning board variance, we'll then proceed with that and get you guys into their onto their schedule. That would be the next step anyway. That would be the so next step have anyway. To come back here first, so no, I think once you've segment. determined okay. what you want to do there, right. then you can go ahead and file, um, you know, submit an application to the ZBA, right, right Christina, and um, and then they will. What they'll do is hear your case, set a public hearing. We'll then get the form from them, and we'll then you know formally give a response to them about it, um, and as to what you know what we recommend. I um, would say a positive letter of recommendation from planning would be helpful, right? And we and would request that, but you, don't you want it for office, right? Huh? That's what we don't give those. Yeah. Okay. It really well, we have a standard in zoning yeah. for the planning board to make. We make recommendations. On, yeah. yeah, but that would come later. Later, yeah. Wow. We don't. Okay. Right. We, okay. as I say, we, the, you get. Maybe I wasn't clear. So you submit an application to them. They put you on their agenda. They hear your case. They, they set a public hearing, and then they send us a form in which we then get to hear what their comments they were to you and we then discuss it publicly and then submit our comments back to them. Um, so it sounds like there's a more uniform in the office because Richard would be more comfortable with them. Well, I think he's trying to help you out. I was bringing up the point of zoning that says yeah. office is a less impact than yes. residential. No, then that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, it, okay. it isn't Good. so much our Thank personal you. feelings about it, it's no, what it it's what we, I'm sorry if I misinterpreted, but it's really sort of what, um, you know, if, if you have options in terms of what works for you, then what we're saying is these are the things that both give the planning board more or less discretion when you come back to us for site plan review and the things that um, require more or less of a request for an area variance. And the smaller the variance request, the easier it is for them to be able to say yes um, in, in any circumstance. Okay. So, all right. So, I don't know how parking, if it's 1,700 feet roughly, or 18, it's 300 feet per space. It, well, it's probably equivalent to what it is now. You don't know how to look at that. That'd be, f what? Five and a half. Five, five, six spaces. Well, right. That's, that's equivalent it, to the. <coughs> It's two more spaces, but we're still down. We'd be but you're commercial, down and right. then yeah. and then we have yeah. the discretion to be able to look at parking in other locations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So thank you. Sure. All right. Thank thank you. Great. Appreciate thank you. it very much. Yeah. yeah. Good, good stuff. Okay. So Michael, yes. Um, as David has noted, um, you can probably go ahead and make your initial secret um, typing, and David has. Um, recommended that be an unlisted action and I agree with him. Okay. All right. So let's um, I'll make well to clear the only other um, observation yep. I would make is with a would make is with an unlisted action determination if the board makes that finding you should consider whether you want to submit a, a full EAF, a long EAF because that could allow you condition negative declaration if that is a um, consideration the planning board wants to make. In order for there to be a condition negative declaration, you need a full EAF. So that's something for you to consider. Yeah. Just refresh my memory on How did we make that with the county when we went to this originally? So, um, this is going back to county again, right? Yeah. And that it, it um, is my recommendation that it should be referred oh, to county, right. correct. Yeah. Uh, How do we make that on the first time? It, it, it when when, yeah, when when you have a complete application, it's my recommendation. When they've decided where they so want to go. ZBA after ZBA. You want to know what they decided the last time? Yeah. I'm looking. I um, Did the county have any impact from this? Let's see. I'm just, I don't know that I have my notes in front of me about that. I believe that. their comment was on the facade to try to make it. Yeah, we that sounds possible. Brick, 
I don't believe there was any other. There was no parking issues with them? Around the no, 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 because, but yeah. you should check, but that was the only comment I believe. Well, you should check, because you okay. got the application going before. Yeah, 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 right, we'll <laughs> check. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so the last time you guys did a short environmental assessment yeah, form, and the secret determination was 5-0 in favor of a negative declaration. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have any notes here about county comments. Um, you did previously have an area of variance that for this application already, which we recommend. But that's not listed on the plan. And okay. When I reviewed that application before, I didn't the, like the street file, I didn't find um, reference to that. So it's referenced we, on this plan. It is referenced on this plan. I missed it, I guess. I, okay. yeah, I think it is. It says it was 7,500 before um, this 5,000 restaurant and two. It was approved. I mean, I have notes. Ulster County Planning so, Board. I'm sorry, I, I missed it on this. Yeah, no, that's fine. I have notes from. And I took it from the old one, so it's on. July 15th, 2014. Ulster County Planning Board, I uh, just have notes that they approved it, so I don't think they had any comments that were directly, um, there were no comments at a public hearing that was held on the, that date, and the ZBA had previously approved the variance. Did you say that was August? July 15th, 2014. Um, so, okay, um, so, <coughs> well, Make a motion to declare this as an unlisted action under seeker. So moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, other than that, we'll just, um, you guys should go and decide what to do and then okay. do your application to the ZBA and we'll see you after that. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, so the last item, which Richard, you might want to stick around for, yeah. yes. is um, uh, make last up. Sunday. You can just stay up here if you want. Uh, last Sunday, there was a site visit for PB1706, which is a proposed black box theater at uh, the address is 12 Main Street. This is the property that um, sits up and behind Water Street Market. Um, it's currently a gravel parking lot that appears to have um, shared use between uh, Water Street and the building whose address I don't know, but it's the blue building on the corner of Wirtz and Main Street. Um, so everything that we asked for was assembled on the site. We had all the corners marked. Um, there were actually um, <coughs> wood posts that were mounted that identified the the height of the building uh, referenced from the Water Street Market paved parking lot. Um, and then <coughs> hazard tape was run across so that you could actually see, you could stand inside the virtual building um, that identified the actual height, which is 15 feet 6 inches from the parking lot below. Um, in addition, the doorways were um, marked out with um, <coughs> neon paint on the ground as well as um, the walkway that is now designed to travel on the west side of the building from the parking lot around the west side of the building and then bring you um, to the to the Water Street Market parking lot that currently exists. Um, there was, Dennis was there, Rich Sudo, myself, Dave Gilmore. Uh, we looked at the site uh, itself and you provided a lot of um, good answers to our questions. We then went down and actually looked from the Water Street Market by the fountain up at the site uh, to see what you could see. Um, and then we went to the nearest neighbor on Wirtz Avenue who had invited us to come over and looked at the property from their backyard. Um, again, to sort of get a visual sense from the yard um, and we asked them to then take a look from higher up. So, uh, your impressions from the site visit? I think it's great. I've talked to a lot of people about it. I think Richard did a good job. Everything was laid out there. It was very uh, easy for us to get a good uh, feel for what the, the 
finished product's going to be like. We, we discussed the, where it's going to look the, uh, uh, the fountain. And uh, we, uh, we felt that that was going to flow into the Water Street market itself. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see any negatives at all. I thought it was a great idea that Michael uh, uh, went to see the neighbors to get their impressions. It was, uh, it was really, uh, to me, it showed that the community tries to work together. Yeah. And uh, they, they, had, they had different uh, thoughts, and uh, I think we answered most of their questions and concerns and, uh, and uh, uh, assured them that under the the current regime, if you will, that we do watch out that things aren't going to be changed. So my thoughts uh, is I hope this thing moves forward quickly and uh, it should be a big benefit. So we'll, uh, we now have your materials, so we'll have an application, we have your application and um, we plan to have you on the agenda in two weeks. So we'll discuss some of the particulars about, you know, the issues. I don't think there's any surprises. The issues have to do with parking impacts on their property, uh, certainly for the nearest neighbor, um, some of the impacts during construction are gonna be significant that we'll wanna make sure. Um, I will note at this point that I think one of the things that looks very promising was the your decision about where to put this walkway and the fact that this walkway is now gonna be relatively close to and above the fountain provides an opportunity for this building now to actually get integrated into Water Street Market as opposed to be just something that sort of stands above it. Um, the walkway becomes a feature for the actual property as opposed to just, you know, and um, as you pointed out, in, in designing it, you might even have opportunities for, for sort of sitting areas up there. Yeah. Um, and if there are ways to soften the building, um, especially on the west side through planting, um, perhaps vertical, then those sorts of things will even further integrate the building into Water Street Market. And mm -hmm. So um, it looked pretty good. Um, I have to say that uh, from where we were standing on the neighbor's property on their deck, which was several inches above their yard, looking over their fence, it was, it appeared from my height anyway that the tape was either just at or just below the height of their fence. Even from being up. Even That's being. Good. So clearly it would be visible from any of their upper floors um, and may in fact be visible from a neighbor on the other side of Wirtz who also has a line of sight through. Um, so we've asked them to look, um, to look at that and give us some feedback. Thank you very much for leaving the yeah. it up. It's actually been really helpful. I know some other neighbors yeah. have walked over and taken a look at it. Yes. Um, so it's good. I'm I'm just kind of it, it, one of the, the corner moved in a little, so the tape is saggy. But if, yeah, you know, it's off. It's, it's but, but it's, it's close it's enough. Close the enough. other three corners are whole. <laughs> but the one in the middle of the parking lot is the one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. But it's, Do you design all the HVAC stuff on the roof? There's nothing on the roof. Nothing. Yeah, so it's it's nothing made, on the roof. No. I, we, we well, the there'll be a roof. <laughs> um, mini split systems, so um, condensers okay. outside yeah. or a ducted split. Good. You know, liquid coming in and the, the units are inside, so there's nothing. I'm pretty adamant there was nothing on the roof. There may be a plumbing vent, right, for a, one bathroom or two bathrooms. Yeah. But that's, you know, yeah. I want to keep that off the roof. I don't want to be making that ugliness for them. I think we can achieve that. Uh, uh, Water Street has nothing on the roof, it's all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, morning meetings are next to impossible for me nowadays, but mm -hmm. so it's good that you kept it up. It's not good. Oh, did you get a chance to see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think when you see it, it's like, it's, it's pretty low. It's not a very high goal. <laughs> yeah, no. no I, was, I was actually kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It's good. I'm, me too. So, so. so it was, a, I really appreciate the site visit. Thank you for all the yeah. work that you and appreciate Terry it. did. Yeah, well, it's, um, it yeah. makes a huge difference, and I think it will for the, the, the neighbors as well to be able to see. Yeah. Right. See it in so 3D there. Thank you for mm -hmm. organizing yep. that. Good. It might not have happened if you hadn't been specific. So um, sure. And the owner was happy to do it. He's very excited. So, yeah. so you know, we will, 
we have a procedure to go through. There are definitely impacts that we need to consider, um, and I'm sure that we'll hear from some neighbors in terms of their concerns. Um, I know that you've done some parking analysis. We're not going to go into it now, um, but we have that data, and we'll we'll discuss all of that at our next meeting in two weeks. And the drawings do have. I took photos of the tapes and oh, good. embellished them with yellow lines. So it's also on the drawings, just for reference. That's great. Even all right. From the Water Street and from the entry, from the main. Yep. So it's good. So well, thank you, Richard. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Well, thank you. All right. Great. So. Um, the remaining bits of the agenda, we can't actually approve the minutes ton tonight because we don't have a quorum of people to do that, it's just Dennis and myself. Um, so we'll hold that off until the 20th. Um, as far as our meeting overview for the 20th, um, we will have the PB1706 to look at. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll have materials so that we can discuss um, zero place. Uh, do we have anything else? Submitting a new site plan for Water Street Market. Yeah, submitting for the theater. For the theater. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Okay, sorry. And uh Roger School is submitting uh team views and offices to the president for Okay. All right. So we have that. All right. So that'll be a new one. Um I don't think there's anything else that carries over. Will Ken Sofers no and uh Mr. Botros not for next, um, so no, so nothing from this meeting. So that's what we have planned for the 20th. Um, we should know hopefully later this week whether we have the materials we need for zero place, we'll see. Um, anything else? No? Um, welcome our new liaison from the village board. Oi. Mr. William Murray. Yeah. If you have any, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Um, and uh, one other piece of business, um, I will try to establish some dates with the town planning board, but they would very much like to do a joint in-house training session about Seeker. Um, I had mentioned to you about Mondays being a more likely date, so I will try to coordinate some dates with them and find out when you're available and then make sure that we can um, try to get all of our planning board members there with them. So um, that's pending, but I'm, my goal is to have, to have us do that sometime this summer. So you might take vacations too, I don't know. So we'll need to make sure that's not a conflict. Um, but, but we would very, I think getting some of these would be great. So. I don't have dates yet, but I'll try to work on that the next over the next two weeks. Uh, that's it. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys very much.